Hi, I'm Dr. Canfield, and today we are going to look at a little bit more on one of the executive function skills, self-regulation, but we've heard so many of not just clients, but colleagues, uh, friends, people up and down the halls talking about changing work styles and environments and you know is it a debate or not is it something that is here to stay and that often is what you do here it changes here to stay but what does it mean but more importantly to you because we're here to look at you. If your goal progression is changing, maybe for the better, not, but you're monitoring that, then we want to see, you know, why that might be either way. And it, it sort of fits also with the idea of the broader purpose and then the more specific goal that you're deliberately pursuing and to keep that momentum going. Part of the suggestion is that if the work environment has changed in any way, then it's possible that there could be a change in performance, there could be a change in productivity, just as influenced by not just being in a certain environment, but some of the cues and some of the pacing that went along with those cues previously might have changed. And some of them are measurable, some may not be, but we're going to do our best to try to make things measurable and in goal setting theories of all sorts, and there are many goal setting theories, there is a notion of specificity and measurement. And we will look at how you can look at that fluid continuum, maybe visually. I think it's why people love to see bar charts or you know, line charts or pie charts or any kind of visual rather than just don't give me a bunch of numbers and they, they can see it and it gives them a sense of, you know, there's a trend. I think it's too soon to say any trend could fairly be established as that's what it is but things have been changing that I think we'd probably say that. And so looking at goal setting and how self-regulation relates when you have a goal or we would say a self expectation and you notice you haven't put in substantial effort to pursue the goal. It, it could be alarming and we wouldn't conclusion jump as to why, but you've noticed it and it could be short term. It could be, it could be anything that has intervened, but you definitely had probably every reason to take note of it and then to revisit that influence of self-regulation so that you can check and see, well, maybe, maybe it's not shifting as much as I feel, or maybe it's shifting a lot more than I feel. So by placing this objective on the fluid continuum, you have the visualization of when the goal is shifting toward productivity, when your performance is enhanced, and when learning is enriched, we would say learning 
would create ultimately mastery. That's our hope. And if mastery is nearing, then that would shorten the measurement of time to complete a segment of your goal. So all of that's very simple and probably you have a general idea of, yeah, I think probably a little slower, but overall, you know, maybe it takes me longer, but I take a few breaks and naps and sometimes I run the kids to the store and okay. As long as we know what it is, I think it's, it's, one thing to make a conscious decision when you think, I don't know how, how I got this way. That's sometimes it could be a health problem. Sometimes it could be denial or something has changed in your motivation. So that versus lagging of energy and motivation. So, ah, oh, lagging, you know, so you had energy and now something is heavy. And so hmm, why is that? Because it's still important, right? Isn't it? And then I think this is where it is more noticeable by you and possibly by a manager that you're forgetting some steps that you had already learned. That's sort of like I dug the ditch, I turned around and somebody threw the dirt back in. Ew. Yes, that for some people it doesn't bother them a bit, they just keep digging. For some, they do not want to backtrack. I did it once, I'm not doing it again. So forgetting steps and or having something happen to change that increase in self-doubt it could be as a result of that or who knows so we're just really taking our self dissertation approach to kind of put this to task and see hmm if there is a decline in my skill set why is that Hmm. And self-doubt regarding how important the goal is to you, that's going into a danger zone. That's almost getting to the point of maybe it just doesn't matter. Maybe it never was important. Okay. So looking at this process of self-regulation, and yes, one of the eight executive function skills. And I chuckle because we just completed nine modules on that topic. I have no idea if you saw even one, but it was something that had been discussed for a bit and has always been looked at as a critical group of skills that influences how a person gets things done. And so with many conditions, whether it be COVID, whether it be any of the ADHD, ADD, potential diagnoses, long COVID, autoimmune system disorders, all sorts of influences, even traumatic events, grief, any sort of loss, then we can see that relearning of those skills can be done. So this would be relevant to what we're discussing here in particular, as you're looking more specifically at your goals. All right. So self-regulation's effect on anyone's individual performance. Number one is focus. That is how you keep your attention toward 
relevant activities that are not over here or looking at Twitter or looking at Instagram, but relevant activities and staying focused and being able to self-regulate so that you're not sort of shifting away to irrelevant topics, activities, or if your work environment has changed and we're not taking a position on this because many work environments have changed and the employees are in their offices, but the offices have either downsized, restructured, have gone to a more open environment, less privacy, less feeling of, you know, oh no, there's people all around and I, I just, that just is something I can't do. You know, I get so distracted. But if you're at home, then for different reasons, perhaps that you have found quite nice and functional in your life as a whole and your family life and just personal life. And it may make you more comfortable, but it may be that those distractions or just skills in preparing the first part of dinner, that does not add on to your productivity for your job. And so we know that goes without saying, but sometimes it starts to get a little murky when it feels that we did slip over and start dinner. We did check how the laundry's doing. We ran to the store for that one ingredient that we forgot. And so everything counts as far as there's, you know, the clock stays the same. And it really used to be referred to as, well, those are evening and weekend activities, but we had to back that up and say, well, this could be a different way of working. It may make healthier people. It's probably going to be a long time before longitudinal studies can really assess. And there probably will be many notions of for certain types of work, this could be effective for other types or industries, or if there is conflict as a result of this person would like to have this way of working, but is unable to, then we've got more of an internal conflict within the work setting. So keeping focused regardless and those irrelevant activities, I'm not saying they're not important, I don't know, checking Twitter and the, you know, social media, that long before the pre the, long before the pandemic, we saw that was a problem. But staying energized, this is something that has been deflating for many of the folks I work with, that they, they thought that they had paced themselves about the same way, but they, they've kind of lost a certain type of energy and starting to wonder if maybe maybe they need to shift their type of work and i think before any big decisions like that are made it, it would be critical to put this to task and measure as well as you can and it's it's difficult to have a true control group and study this against prior, but in some ways, when it comes around to your performance review, I, I think that is something that's been happening and sometimes it's favorable and sometimes not. And if it is a bottom line that is more about budget for the whole department or the organization, sometimes it may not even be with specificity to you, but 
many layoffs have been very well documented that are occurring for reasons that are not simply about performance. However, if it is something that there would be a selection of, we're going to have to eliminate 10% of the staff and you want to stay, then I think it is critical that you take note of your responsibility to respect your methods of really fully engaging in this process. So having this bigger notion of purpose has such almost a personal influence. It could be a professional influence, but professional, you're a human, it's important to you, it matters. So this can serve as an energizer in a very broad way, but we can lose sight of that in the day-to-day. -day. Higher goals will induce greater effort while lower goals induce lesser effort. So you will be more energized as you learn, master, become more challenged. You also will have a, a short period of time if you master something and it just doesn't take as long to accomplish it. And productivity will go up. Clearly, performance goes up because there's been mastery. Persistence goals. Yeah, they're affected by persistence. <laughs> if we don't pedal the bike, then we fall over. Yeah, persistence affects goal attainment. And it really works both ways that one affects the other. Setting a goal increases the likelihood of achieving the goal. Sticking with your efforts will seal the deal. So persistence, awareness, just staying on top of things and not getting distracted. Goals activate cognitive awareness and strategies which allow you to manage your behavior and interaction with your environment will have a lot of influence on what we see as we measure in whatever way we design that, whether it's a visual bar chart, counting things, and any of these would be building different strategies and motivation for certain tasks. And this section and much of what preceded this comes from a study that dates back to 2002. So this is pre-pandemic and it's a, a very thorough look at building a practically useful theory. And that's for goal setting and task motivation. When I work with clients and um, each client is, as you would expect, an individual, it is never the same. Same person could come in hour after hour, it would never be the same because I work with humans. Some have certain preferences as to how we work together and we, we try to figure out what works and what's important to them. And so perhaps as an example, someone would say, all right, I want to stick with the agenda of addressing what's going on with my work. Okay, and I you know, have some notes and sometimes I will receive an email with a beautiful outline of what our agenda is, or at least thoughts or free writes. So this 
might be, oh, okay, this looks like maybe some feedback from a boss. Uh, okay. And I hear, I think I've lost that loving feeling. Um, you mean with, oh, and so what they're concerned about, not just I've lost my edge, that's been discussed quite a bit. And what is that edge? And maybe, maybe that edge was making you anxious, but whatever it is, but the, I've lost that loving feeling would be more pertinent to any person who has really embraced. I am so lucky that I have a job that I, I think that's why I'm here, you know, in this world in a big way. And, you know, I know that's broad, but most of my individual objectives and responsibilities really fit with that. And so that really makes the goals, as we say, purposeful goals. And that person is very lucky to be energized and deliberately walking toward that goal with that extra pep in their step as they are feeling, yeah, another good day. We move the needle. And so if walking deliberately toward your purpose is an active form of pursuing your goal, there is a sense of overall congruity with your greater purpose as somehow this measurable, purposeful entity fits with who you are and perhaps even why you feel you exist. And it's not to go off on an existential tangent. It's really, it could be very simple that I, I love growing people. I love helping people, you know, rise up to their potential or you look at someone who is a professional athlete, we'd say, wow, <laughs> I think I could understand you. You're living the dream. So even someone who is that fortunate probably has those days, maybe has a long stretch of days. I don't know. But if, and even though a person is not falling out of love with their purposeful goal, they, they could have influences that are kind of similar if you were looking at any relationship and you have a relationship with your role in your work, with your job, your company, with your colleagues, all of that, but, but with your job. And so if they are feeling just, you know, fatigue even, or burned out, maybe didn't take any vacations. Many people felt silly taking their vacation days when they were in lockdown. And thankfully, most managers were monitoring that saying, no, 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 you, you've been working. And so you're not on vacation. And I can see that that's measurable. And that's good. But simply just not revisiting the specifics of why, why they believe in or love this purposeful goal, which can happen, you know, that you could even be rolling along, working very hard and even build it into your action plan or project management and skip it. <laughs> it's sort of like one of those, well, I don't have to sleep the full seven hours. Well, 
maybe so. I think if you keep skipping several of those hours, it's probably going to have an effect. So those, where are we? How are we doing? You know, I always say celebrate your anniversary if you have a partner. And often people look at me kind of funny, but it's not a bad thing. It's a, it's not even a, I'm going to talk about the budget, but really how, how, how am I doing in respecting you and vice versa? I'm interested in knowing and knowing that we're always learning and always becoming a different us, even though we have our constant value that keeps things lively. So if we skip over that in any relationship or a project, then it, it could get a little lackluster and aimless and definitely the fun would go out of it, the energy. And so let's take a look at just that commitment aspect to the goals. So you will perform better when you're committed to accomplishing certain goals. You don't have to be in love with them, but you have a commitment. You respect the commitment. That's self-respect and respecting the allegiance to whatever is the greater good of the organization, the department, your colleagues, your team your direct reports, your manager. So having that commitment to accomplishing certain goals is influenced by, and we'll look at a few points. Number one, the importance of the expected outcomes of goal attainment. Hmm. The expected outcomes. So that's a little bit of the, you want to stay in the present, but you want to know you're going somewhere and you're under that larger umbrella and you look up every once in a while. Number two, the belief that you are able to achieve that goal. And so that's where the self-doubt of self-efficacy of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, if I feel like I've lost it or, or just maybe skills have diminished, really that would seem simple. I need to sharpen up. I need to pull out those books. I need to do a little refresher. If that's happened, it's not well, I think I better just resign. It's really just saying that's, that's learnable and it's relearnable. Commitment to others. That is truly fitting with goal setting theory, even though goal setting theories say a goal has to be yours you have to be truly and authentically aligned with it to stick with it and make it your own. However, if there are others, and generally there are, who are on the team or you do have the accountability that you have these contracts or even what we call social contracts that are like agreements to others, this will strongly improve your commitment and even your persistence. And number four, motivation. That love and feeling. Why am I doing this? Interest, stimulation are certainly going to be directly influenced by that level of motivation. But every once in a while, that has to be defined or redefined or re-examined, not just skipped over. Just, you no, know, we went over that from the beginning. Well, you know, it, it would serve many purposes to e even happiness, you know, that we want to define it. It 
doesn't dramatically change, but in some ways it does evolve just as you are always learning and always developing. And it is true over a period of time, certain content areas are more relevant, certain values, even big picture values that for fresh out of undergrad, probably security and where will I live in my retirement years? Not top of mind, leisure, maybe freedom, and maybe, you know, making those social connections and feeling what it's like to have full autonomy. Those are probably more at the top of the list than finding your retirement community. Some people may do both and that's admirable, but having a revisit of what it is that motivates you, how it could have evolved. And if there are any obstacles, we just look at those and break them down into parts, neutralize them as well as we can so that we keep the energy flowing. So looking on to number five, although internal validation is a consistent responsibility for you and a source of persistence, it may be helpful to seek external feedback or input from others to help determine when any behavior might need to be adjusted or adapted. Those refreshers may rejuvenate that love and feeling by reacquainting you with emotions and strong beliefs that were at the origin of your relationship with this purposeful goal. Flexibility to adapt and acquire new methods of doing things will enhance that learning process and development, mastery, learning more to master more will each be served. It will also get you out of your head as I hear, which has on occasion occurred as a result of isolation. Even though there are Zoom meetings and all sorts of Slack communications and any form of getting together, but not really getting that energy and maybe starting to feel like giving a dinner party that you thought it went well, but by the next morning you've talked yourself out of it and it was a disaster until you start receiving the thank you notes. That, that was wonderful. That was great. So, you know, one reason some people go into business with someone that having someone to banter things back and forth is not a dependency. It's really just keeping yourself sort of aligned with not just the objectives, but, you know, I'm seeing this, but I've been looking at it for so long. I may have lost my perspective. Number six, substantive tasks are more rewarding and certainly more fulfilling. Goal commitment will be enhanced when you adjust your perception of the task as one that contributes to a greater goal. As you master certain areas, which that is going to kick up the energy, I do believe, as you find yourself kind of back in that mode of, I'm, I'm, I take less time doing things, okay, that's energy. 
and it's time saving. This will ensure that you keep challenging yourself to keep that learning process going. Getting a little uncomfortable simply by embracing the challenge will spice things up and acquaint you with new articles of information which you may share and which you will maybe find will contribute to the project, not to take it off course, but to enrich it and to help you find new challenges and new things to learn and new things to master. Participation, number seven. When you are working with others toward a goal, remember participation influences self-efficacy as well as increases level of performance and productivity. That's pretty well studied. The more invested a person is in designing the goal, they see their imprint, they've had input, they have buy-in, the more likely they are going to stick with it, accomplish the goal, the greater is their desire to positively influence the process. So that also contributes to that energy. As an active participant, you will adjust your level of energy and that commitment to goal achievement will stay in a healthy place. So let's just review some very basic steps for accomplishing the incremental steps toward the larger objective. Number one, observe what needs to be done. Number two, examine the parts. Breaking a hole into parts removes that overwhelming feeling of the largeness of the broader purpose. Number three, organize an action plan through your successive approximation planning. Create an end time for each incremental step. That will give you that little completion, finished rush of dopamine so that it's still moving, but you are accomplishing things and it is measurable. Four, create an end time for each incremental step. Otherwise, it can get a little loose. Number five, take initiative to just do it, to start. That may be the hardest thing for that next step sometimes, but it build it in. Time for step to take initiative. Number six, persist in the plan with that deliberate movement toward the purposeful goal that keeps the energy up, reminds you why you're there. Number seven, assess and reassess. You might revise the timeline if needed and that's just built in. So it's not, trouble has stricken us that we're not going to get done. We've already known sometimes we might have to readjust one block to another time. Number eight, complete the plan. That's another step, which is an incremental step, but it will be another finishing of what is moving you in a very visual way to completion of the greater good. Number nine, as you complete each segment, you again have the opportunity to reacquaint with your broader sense of purpose. How this purposeful goal is aligned and has particular meaning to you and perhaps how you can have 
the dialogues with your team so that they have that buy-in and then maybe adjustments are to be made even how they participate. But why the progression and enrichment is deepening your sense of purpose and the connectivity to the relationship that you have with your purposeful goal. More broadly, you will be regularly reminded that this process is no accident. It's purposeful and you are building something that has meaning. It matters. It matters to you. It may matter to a certain population, to a certain environment. It matters. It's important. It has meaning and has much to do with who you are as a professional as well as a human being. Thank you and good luck to you. It is a different time, a changing time, but it is going to be interesting to see how we adapt because people have done a fine job of adjusting and adapting to so many things in the past few years. So there's no doubt they will continue to do so, and that includes you. I'm Dr. Canfield. See you soon.